Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Kuzi P80C wireless headset. Full disclosure that the manufacturer sent me this item free of charge in turn for an honest review, but they are not compensating me in any other way, so as always this will be my straightforward opinion of this product. Let's take a look at this packaging and you'll see right off the bat that we have several grammatical errors which are likely due to poor translation, so my first impressions are not that good. But let's get it out of the box and check it out. On the top of the packaging, we have a card with directions on how to connect the microphone boom, which probably means a lot of customers had challenges with this considering it was added in on top of the product. Next up, we have the headset and some cables wedged into the side. The first one here is a micro USB cable, which is kind of a shame considering USB-C is a much better standard that a lot of manufacturers have been switching to. Then we have a four pole 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable, which is made of a very nice fabric material and feels pretty premium. It would have been nice if the USB cable matched this style. On the other side of the packaging, I was surprised to see that this headset included a USB Bluetooth receiver, which can make the connection process as simple as plugging the receiver into your computer, as usually the headset will already be paired to it. So now on to the headset. At first glance, it seems pretty premium. It folds for more compact storage, although no carrying case or pouch is included. As far as the connections, we have a recessed 2.5 millimeter port for the removal microphone boom, a 3.5 millimeter port for connecting to wired sources, such as an inflate entertainment system, an outdated micro USB connection for charging the headset, a power switch, and some buttons for controls. The headphones feel pretty good. They seem sturdy and not unnecessarily heavy. And finally, we have the microphone boom, which also has a button for muting the mic, and this plugs into the bottom and is somewhat flexible so you can bend it and point it towards your mouth. And finally, you get a small user manual for both the headset and the USB receiver, which explains all the buttons and features of the headset. So let's take a look at the setup process. If you have a PC or Mac, you can use the USB-A receiver, and I found that the headset was already paired to it. After a short delay, the light will turn blue and it will be connected. Then all you need to do is check the input and output devices are changed to this headset and it will work right away. The headset is capable of connecting to two different devices at the same time. And to connect to the second device, it's pretty easy. The headset will show up in your list of available Bluetooth devices. However, after two devices are paired, changing the headset to any additional devices is not easy. You have to go to one of the first two devices to unpair the headset before the headset will be visible to any additional devices. There isn't a way to clear all paired devices from the headset's memory by itself, making this process very confusing and frustrating. I would have much preferred a button or function to manually put the headset into pairing mode to add a new device, with the oldest one automatically being removed, like most other headsets do. Also, I do want to mention that unlike devices from other manufacturers I've reviewed like Jabra and Poly, using this USB receiver does not offer the mute to sync between the headset and the call or application you are using. This is an issue because Kuzi mentions in the product advertisement that the Plus model with the USB receiver does have the mute feature available for cell phones and computers whereas the model without the USB receiver only has muting available for cell phones. In the manual, it also mentions that muting only works with cell phones. However, in my testing, it didn't work with anything. It does mute the sound and plays a somewhat annoying beep noise every few seconds to remind you that you're on mute, but because it's muting the sound from being transmitted, you won't get any kind of mute notifications within your software if you accidentally speak when muted and that mute doesn't sync with the mute button on your phone call or video calling software, so it can get a little confusing when you end up double muted. Other devices solve this problem by syncing the mute so that when you mute your headset, it mutes the software or vice versa. It would have been nice if this could work on this headset. Now let's talk about the range. I put my phone on one side of my apartment and walked as far away as possible from it, and I didn't have any issues with the range or the sound cutting out. It worked fine in far distances. Now let's talk about the sound quality. The first thing I noticed right away is that there is an intermittent high frequency whine coming from the left ear cup. This seems to be common on a lot of low end Bluetooth speakers and headphones. Using this condenser microphone I was able to get a recording so take a listen. In case that didn't come through, here's a spectrum analysis and after applying a low and high pass filter we can see the peak is around 3200 Hz. Let's take a listen to what that frequency sounds like. And here we can even see the pattern of this tone in the recording. Ouch! I then played some music from both a computer and mobile device and found the sound quality to be adequate but not amazing. The volume gets plenty loud and when listening to music with good stereo effects, the headset reproduced them well. It sounded as if they were a pair of open back headphones but without all the sound leakage. 
The bass was good, not overly boomy, and better than I expected. Throughout the mid-range, some frequencies seemed lost, making music sound a little hollow in my opinion. And the treble was way too high, and made music sound very shrill and fatiguing. And it only got worse when raising the volume to the point where your ears will hurt very quickly. For voice reproduction, such as conference calls, they sounded fine. I didn't have any issues hearing participants in my daily meetings on Zoom and traditional phone calls. I also tested the latency with the Bluetooth connection and I didn't notice any issues here. The audio and video remained in sync without a problem, which is great. Now let's take a look at the microphone. This headset features a microphone built into the left ear cup and also features a removable mic boom, which should offer better pickup of your voice. In my testing, both microphones were sufficient at picking up my voice in my quiet home office, and no one on my calls complained saying that they couldn't hear me. However, I did have one issue on my end, and that's that this headset does not offer any kind of side tone when on calls. Side tone is a feature that normally activates on headset when their mic is active, and gives you a soft kind of preview of what your voice sounds like while you're speaking. This allows you to hear that your voice is being picked up well, and allows you to proactively prevent any heavy breathing into the microphone, and most importantly, it allows you to speak at a normal volume instead of shouting. Since this headset offers a snug fit around your ears, it's good at filtering out background noises, but it also has the side effect of blocking out your own voice. For example, try plugging your ears and talking. Hear how it's muffled and you need to speak louder? Most other headsets use side tone to prevent this, and I'm disappointed that this headset did not have any option for this. When I checked with the manufacturer, they basically said, that's the way it is and there's no way to change it. The microphone boom is somewhat flexible, but I do wish you could slide it up or down, or it could be flipped over to the other side like most other headsets. But on the other hand, it is removable, so if you don't need the mic, you can just unplug it to get it out of your way. The microphones seem to be omnidirectional, and I found this to be odd because usually with a headset like this, especially when you're using the mic boom, you only want the sound from your voice to be picked up, not any of the sounds around you. And now here are some audio samples from the microphone on this headset. Hello, this is a test of the PADC without the microphone boom attached in a quiet room. Hello, this is a test of the PADC with the microphone boom attached in a quiet room. Hello, this is a test of the Jabra Evolve 40 in a quiet room. Hello, this is a test of the built-in laptop microphone in a quiet room. Hello, this is a test of the built-in laptop microphone in a noisy room. Hello, this is a test of the Jabra Evolve 40 in a noisy room. Hello, this is a test of the PADC with the microphone boom attached in a noisy room. Hello, this is a test of the PADC without the microphone boom in a noisy room. As you heard, it didn't do as well in an environment with lots of background noise, but it is much better than using the built-in microphones on your device. One thing to note that this headset does not feature any kind of active noise cancellation. It does, however, claim that it does noise reduction for its microphones, which as we found is okay. The build quality feels okay, but it's unknown how it will hold up over heavy use. A lot of people on Amazon shared pictures of the headset falling apart, so your mileage may vary with that. One thing I hate, however, is how the ear cups fold in. Almost every time I go to pick up this headset, it wants to fold up and I have to pull it apart again. One thing to note is that the ear cups do not swivel side to side, so if you have ears that stick out a bit, this may lead to soreness. In my case though, I was able to wear this headset for long periods of time and I didn't have any issues with discomfort. The headband and ear cups are very nice and soft, however they don't breathe well, so after a long period of use they make it a little sweaty. Also I love that there are physical buttons to control things like the volume rather than unintuitive swiping gestures that some other manufacturers have used in the past. So now let's talk about the battery life, and I have to say, this must be the best feature of this entire headset. Charging the headset from 0 to 100 took a little over 2.5 hours, and starting my work week on a Monday at 9am, I turned on this headset and left it on continuously to see how long it would last. All of the wireless headsets I've used in the past would either last a few hours or maybe a day or two before dying. Power on. Talk time. Three hours. However, this headset lasted me an entire week of mixed usage. It wasn't until midday on Saturday that I noticed it finally got down to 10%. This made me realize it has a really good low power mode when it's not being used but still turned on. So then I thought, how long would it last if it was used continuously? So for this test, I queued up a playlist of a few songs and put it on repeat, and then set the volume to 50%. While this ran, I opened an audio recorder so the mic would be active as well, essentially simulating a call. 
I even put the microphone up to a speaker of another device playing a live stream so that the headset would be continuously transmitting audio while playing the music at the same time, completely wirelessly. I didn't expect this to last very long, but to my surprise, it went on for over 30 hours of continuous playback and recording. The only downside I can mention about the battery is the only way to know what the battery level is is to pair it to an iOS device and then look in the battery widget. Otherwise, you don't really have a way of knowing how, how charged it is until it says battery low every few minutes. It would have been nice if the headset gave a percentage when turned on like some other Power headsets on. do. Battery high. Phone one connected. Well, if the battery dies and you're not able to charge it, you can use the included auxiliary cable and I found that playback and the mic work just fine when hardwired and because the Bluetooth isn't on, you won't hear that annoying buzzing noise and music and calls will sound the same. Finally, let's talk about pricing and availability. This headset is available in two different versions on Amazon. The model I receive with the Bluetooth dongle currently sells for $65 US dollars, and the other model is the same headset but without the USB receiver for $60 US dollars. In my opinion, you might as well pick up the Plus model for just 5 bucks more. So do I recommend this headset? Well, there's certainly a lot of other headsets on the market that offer better quality, but the stock of them has been very limited lately and their prices are typically much higher. I think the price on this one is very attractive for what you're getting. The headset works, it's comfortable, and has amazing battery life. The sound quality may not be the best, but it's sufficient for most people's use cases, and I think a lot of people are just going to be fine with that. So if you're in the market for a low-cost wireless headset, check out the P80C from Cozy. If you're interested in this headset or need anything else on Amazon, you can help support my channel by using the affiliated Amazon link in the video description. I hope you found this video useful. Please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe, and if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.